Okay, today we're going to talk about the Wi-Fi settings on your at and PACE 5268AC modem router. Your PACE 5268AC has the following features. It's a dual band router that lets you use the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band simultaneously. It uses 8 02.11 AC technology, which has more channels on it than the on the five gigahertz band than the older 802.11N technology. And it also uses band steering technology. This uses the same service set ID SID on both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands, and then automatically decides which band to use for the Wi-Fi connection. Now, the first thing I like to do is personalize my Wi-Fi. Ideally, your AT&T service is going to be the first one on the list, but that only happens if you're in the same room with it. Uh, it might be farther down the list if you're um, if you're in a different room. So I like to change the name to something that I use and sit away from the ATT and to something more personal. And I also like to make the password easier to enter because the password is just so hard to type on a tablet or a phone or if you're at, um, or if you are a hunt and peck typer. So I mean here here I've got to see a bunch of ATTs. Which one of these is mine? Eh, don't know. And another reason I like to make changes is I like to force a five gigahertz connection. And the reason for this is I subscribe to a 300 megabits uh, per second service. That's my subscribe speed. Over the overcrowded 2.4 gigahertz band, my download speed is between 2.6 and 10 megabits per second. And I run these tests in off hours and there's nothing else running in my condo or on my machine. That's a the best I can do is 10 megabits per second. And then it's usually unusable between 9 and 10 a.m. due to the vintage cordless phone that my neighbor uses to talk to her daughter for an hour every morning. And then it also cuts out when we or our neighbors run the microwave. So I don't like the 2.4 gigahertz band and I have gone out of my way to make sure everything that I buy is dual band. Now on the five gigahertz network, my download speed is between 216 and 260 megabits per second on my equipment that supports that speed. Sometimes I'm limited to 100, but 2.6 uh, to 216, that's a big jump and it's well worth forcing a connection to the five uh, gigahertz band instead of letting band steering put me on the 2.4. And another thing I do is I set my um, router to avoid the DFS channels. In the US, the 802.11ac protocol added 12 non-overlapping DFS channels to your five gigahertz band. These new channels are also used for radar. In order to comply with the FCC regu regulations, your router must listen for radar signals and immediately cease communication on a DFS channel if suspected radar is detected. Out of range 5 gigahertz signals are often interpreted as radar and cause connection problems from, uh, in the form of excessive channel hopping. This is a big problem for me. When we got the new AT&T U-verse TV, every time dusk came uh, and we wanted to turn on the six o'clock news, we could watch maybe five minutes and then our uh, service would stop and we'd have to reboot every five minutes from uh, six to eight. 
So we couldn't watch TV when we watched TV uh, because it was using DFS channels. The way they solved that was to get me a different um, access point that used the N technology so it didn't deliver on the AC band. Okay. So there's, here's a list of all of the five gigahertz Wi-Fi channel frequencies and in the US, I'm going to want to have 36, 40, 44, 48, 149, 153, 157, 161, or maybe 165, but I've been told to avoid 165 because there's interference. So you've got eight channels to choose from. Uh, and I just stop the auto channeling when it ends up on one of these numbers and I just uh, change it from auto to, the, to that number. I think I'm using channel 44 right now. So we're going to make some changes. We're going to personalize your Wi-Fi name and your Wi-Fi password. You're going to force uh, five gigahertz Wi-Fi connections by separating the SIDs so that they're not the same. And we're going to select a non-DFS channel for the five gigahertz band. Your five gigahertz equipment, um, you want to do this if your five gigahertz equipment still uses the 802.11N technology and can't find follow your router to those auto-selected DFS channels allowed in the 802.11 AC mode. So on the back of your router, uh, you, you already know your Wi-Fi name and your Wi-Fi password. And down here is the advanced configuration this is the web address to use. And then there's this device access code that you're going to want to copy. Now you're going to open your browser and you're, you're going to type in that IP, local IP address, or you're going to go to at local.net. A lot of instructions that you read on the internet will say to go to at and local.net. Uh, the Firefox browser has a default DNS setting that prevents this from working. So I recommend that you choose a different browser. And here I, I navigated to the site attlocal.net. It should look like this. Uh, no no uh, codes need to be entered to get this far. I can also have, I could have also typed in HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.1.254 as per the back of my router. Here we are on my router modems homepage. And as I go down, you see the 2.4 gigahertz and you see that it has a name that doesn't say at and but something 2.4 because I changed the name. And again, my five gigahertz network doesn't say at and I changed it to be something I can recognize. And when I get down here to the bottom, this is what I wanted to show you. I'm living in a 900 square foot condo and nothing in my Wi-Fi connections are more than 25 feet away from the modem router. Here's the frequency. You see, I have some things that have hooked up to 2.4 in the past. And here's the connection level. With band steering turned on, this would have connected to 2.4. With band steering turned on, this not only would have dropped the red when I went away, when my husband drove off with my phone in the car, it would have switched to 2.4 as soon as it got to red, even if it had initially connected with, the, with 5. Again, my husband's laptop is 6 feet away from the router, but it got yellow. Would not have done, uh, would not have connected to 2.4. And again, 2.4 is 
so slow and it doesn't take that into effect it just looks at the signal strength and maybe it determines how many things are already on five i don't know but i do know that all of these things would would connect to 2.4 when i had band steering turned on okay first thing we're going to do is go over here to wi-fi and i'm going to type in my access code and submit it. That link brought us to the basic options page for our Wi-Fi. It brought us to settings LAN Wi-Fi. That's, that's what that link did. And as we scroll down, you'll only find one SSID and you can have a cut you can use their password or the custom password you can enable or disable the guest network and you see that the uh what channels you're on and you can hit rescan if auto is set up and this one has auto so i can rescan this and it will go to a different channel I have my five gigahertz set to um, Y to channel forty four. It's not set to auto scan because I want to avoid the DFS channels. If I change the name here, I have to press save in order for this to take effect. But let's rescan and let's just see what that does. And it's going to navigate to, to a new um, site. It takes a few minutes. It's going to change to a new channel. It takes a few minutes, 20, to 20 seconds to two minutes. And where did it take us? It changed us to channel 11. There's also an advanced options down here. This one, you only had one SSID. If I had hit save, both of my uh, Wi-Fi settings would be set to 6447.50. I don't want to do that because I'm going to lose some connections. I'm going to go to advanced options. And here, the page is set up to uh, have 2.4 gigahertz. I can enable or disable it. It's got a channel. It's set to auto. I can pick any channel. Uh, 1, 11, and 6 are the standard channels. So I'm just going to accept that. I'm going to, um, I could, I could click on show password and then the password will display in uh, ASCII text as opposed to these little dot, dot, dots. So I can use the default password or I can use my custom password. This is again the 2.4 and I've named it 2.4. I could come, come in here and type anything I want. Nothing will change unless I change it, unless I save it. I can use a custom password, which I have. I have disabled WPS uh, pin because I had too many workmen in here and I was afraid that they were going to hook up to my um, network. I have disabled the guest network. No reason to have this network up and running when I've got so much uh, Wi-Fi interference already. I don't want to add to it. And down here is my five gigahertz Wi-Fi. This, instead of being auto, is on channel 44. It's stuck there. And um, I can 
again, change the SID separately. This is not the recommended way. And you certainly wouldn't want to do this in a private home where you have where you don't have a hostile 2.4 environment. You can use a custom Wi-Fi password and you have to click save in order to save the changes. Okay, you will get this nasty message that your names must match and both radios must be enabled to use the uh, band steering. I don't want to use band steering because I don't ever want to get on 2.4 gigahertz except for on uh, items that do not support five. So I have a few pieces of equipment that only will hook up to 2.4. I don't use it very often, but I do not want to use the five gigahertz. On the basic Wi-Fi settings, uh, you can set the SSID and password for both channels at once to make use of band steering. And if auto ch channel is turned on, you can force a rescan to have your router look for a better channel. When you click on advanced Wi-Fi settings, you get it to another page and you use this page if you live in an overcrowded, downright hostile Wi-Fi environment where the 2.4 gigahertz is unacceptably slow, or if you need to add a guest network. Give Wi-Fi bands different SSIDs to, to disable band steering, and then join the five gigahertz band with any equipment that supports the five gigahertz band. Then you can also set a channel on the five gigahertz band to use a non-DFS channel. So your dual band equipment that only sees non-DFS channels can connect. And it's 2022 and still a lot of things that I see do not support the AC standard or AX, they're, they're still at N. So you want, you want to do those two things. The advanced Wi-Fi settings page is divided into two categories. There's the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi radio configuration and about halfway down the screen, there's the 5.0 gigahertz Wi-Fi radio configuration. None of these changes will take effect until you scroll down to the bottom and find the save button on the right hand side of the screen. On the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band, you get to change the Wi-Fi channel. There's, there are 11 channels. Uh, I use, usually use auto on this because it's such a mess. I just want them to manage it for me but you can choose whatever channel you want and there is no rhyme or reason to what's used around here. You can change the SID and the password and I recommend that your password on the 2.4 and the 5 be the same just for ease of use but the network name if you want to disable band steering you want the network name for the 2.4 to be different than the network name for the 5. 5.0 5 gigahertz, you'll find the Wi-Fi interface with the Wi-Fi channel, auto, or pick a channel number. Recommend using a non-DFS channel. Change your network name or SSID and change your password and then hit save.